Now, if you had the option of alternative banking, would you consider it? Earlier this month, you may remember, you heard from Dave Fishwick from Burnley who set up his own bank. I can help you achieve 5% on your savings, so you hand your money over. You sign a piece of paper then that allows me to lend that out to local people and businesses who can't borrow from the high street banks through no fault of their own. We then take the difference, then we pay you, because we give 5% interest, we then take the difference and we, 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 we pay the tiny overheads in, the, in, in, in Burnley Savings and Loans, which are less than £1,000 a week, and this is the big one, Lee, we give the profit to charity. We do not take bonuses. I'm I'm doing this to prove it can be done. My thing is, if I can do it, anybody can. And the ultimate goal would be to get community banks and community financial operations open in every town across the country to have a real alternative to the high street banks. Dave Fishwick from Burnley, who uh, you heard uh, just the other week on BBC Radio Stoke, and someone who heard that and called was Peter Smith from Newcastle, who has come up with a banking system that doesn't need a stock market and uh, believes will bring trust into the community, and he's with you now. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. No, thank you for popping in. Um, Just explain then what your people's banking system is. Okay. uh, The basic concept has come about over the... I say watching the markets from the last 2000, 2008 when we saw Lehman Brothers collapse and then all these problems that had great repercussions through Europe and the global economy generally. And so as I used to work in the stock market, uh, um, I decided to start looking and investigating other methods of alternative banking. Right. Um, I looked at various solutions and models that had been uh, in operation around the world quite successfully, from Switzerland, which has got a notoriously stable economy, through to alternative or complementary currencies that are used quite successfully in Germany and also in France. Uh, The main problems, though, that they've suffered in the past is being too technical. So what we decided to do was to look at a model of bringing it to a very, very simple situation or state whereby it wasn't totally dependent on the computer, the stock market, and the vagaries of the economic model that we believe is imposed upon the people um, unfairly, unjudiciously, and for most people's opinion, they can sense, maybe just like the cheese industry that we've been discussing, the banking industry with the cheese industry has something in common, the potential for it to reek to high heaven. And this is what Most people understand instinctively. Most people are suckers for the truth. Well, hold on a minute. Let's just just reverse a bit here. What is the idea then? In plain and simple terms, if you want to make it simple, you want to make it paper-based, what do you want to do? Okay. The basic idea is that if you look at the concept of of money, what is it? It's a, a medium of exchange. It facilitates commerce. It facilitates the ability to travel and trade product. But... We maintain that the fundamental basis upon which money is founded is not money, but time. Right. Because nobody can earn money without the expenditure of the most important resource that is a finite commodity for everyone. And that's time. Whether you spend 40 hours a week working in a factory or whether you spend 40 minutes in a dentist's chair, there's a fee attached to it. And that fee, so so what you want to do is trade time, is it? what we looked at is the basic um, theory of relativity by Albert Einstein. E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass, u, times, time squared. So energy is the reward, and we put it on a, a, a mathematical footing and saw that the basic concept through all economic models in all, all time and all of history is time. And whether you're trading in popple beads or little shells on the seashore or the North American Indians trading pelts uh, or fur, there's an expenditure of effort and time to create. So the idea was to decouple the community bank from the international banking practices that are, we think, choking the world under uh, injudicious charging systems as well as injudicious practices. So the prime instinct where was to say to maybe the people who would want to come and join ReBank, or we are bank, the unit is called the Re, um, don't fight the banks, just... Start your own system. Decouple from them. Right, so right, I'm just wanna, I'm trying to simplify this in my head, if nothing else. I work on the radio. 
Mm-hmm. So say that my an hour's worth of my time is worth two of your rees. Mm-hmm. That's what they're called, okay? So then I, what you're basically saying is I could swap... I don't know what service I could offer, to be honest, but uh, my service I could swap with someone else because they are a solicitor and, and their equivalent is worth four rees, so they could have two lots of me for one lot of their time. Yeah. In a way, yes, and in a way, no. The idea, though, what you've just spoken about is the problem with barter system. And that has something what's called a coincidence of wants. You swapping your one hour on the radio would have to come inside with a dentist wanting something from you, which he would exchange. This takes that away. The most simple way now that I hope to explain it to the people of Stoke-on-Trent is the following. Imagine a bank where you can place a deposit. Yeah. You can exchange your sterling and we will issue you units designated under the name RE. That's stage one. However, maybe you wish to come along and earn the units instead of buying them. Okay. What we do then is we have a list of people who want work doing. Right. We also have a list of people who want to work. We also have a list of people who want to provide services. And what we do is we combine, let's say, the practices of a bank with a facilitator of employment right okay so you might want to come and register with us we say there is a person in um blurton and this lady would like her roof re retiling she doesn't have the money for the payment but if you as a tradesman are willing to do that roof you will get credited the going rate in our units into I your see. account then those units are then extendable or tradable with the retailers within the community. I see. So when you then need a job doing whatever that job is, you can then claw back your credit. Now, most people, and this is the uniqueness of the system, and and I put this out as a challenge to maybe the mathematical professors or anyone living at Keele University or teaching there, is the following. Most people contend that no banking system can operate unless there's the positive and the negative side of the ledger. That if you, as the old lady who wants the roof retiling, if she has nothing to offer, then nothing can be provided. We maintain that her need or opening the energy system for her to have that roof done provides the work for the person that wants to do it. Um, Therefore, she is the facilitator of allowing the tradesman to work. With you this morning on BBC Radio Stoke is Peter Smith from Newcastle uh, explaining his uh, alternative method of banking. It's just gone quarter past 11. Smith from Newcastle soon and his uh, new idea for a community bank. Well, it's certainly not a new idea. It's been uh, trialled in uh, in France, we learn. Well, more on that in the next few minutes. Uh, just to... With you at the second, though, is Peter Smith from Newcastle, who worked in the stock market, is now working on a bank. He says that community is the future for banking. And you've explained to us, Peter, how you see it working in terms of uh, people sharing their skills, more importantly, sharing their time and having to uh, have put time into the system to take it out again. And you're hoping that will create employment. Yes. And you say that this basic principle has been tried in France, where you live for a number of years. That's correct, yes. Um, it was trialled in in 2011 in two areas, uh, mainly in an area called Grimo, which is near to Saint-Tropez. That involved um, various members of the community actively seeing if it was an operational system. Uh, one or two retailers there that uh, were involved in the scheme. And it was, uh, was very successful. We kept it paper-based. And the reason we kept it paper-based is so there wouldn't be any complications with uh, internets or, or uh, line connections going down. So it was trialled. It worked quite successfully. And the base, best way to describe how the, the paper-based system works is imagine how things operated through the 50s, 60s, 70s and well, let's say to, towards the end of the 70s in the United Kingdom, where you needed a passbook or a paper-based record before you went to the Halifax or the Hanley Economic, as this building used to be, you couldn't take money out or put it in without the passbook. So the idea is we use a passbook system, um, and uh, in addition to that, we will be introducing a uh, an electronic card, a bit like those used in the rapid transit systems maybe in some parts of the world where you charge the card up Uh, with the units, but from a central administrative hub. Mike in Fenton says, what if you use a tradesperson who needs to buy materials? 
what you're doing then is you're going back to dealing with traditional monetary systems, aren't you? Yes, and that is always going to be a problem within the system, but there's two aspects of the, um, the, uh, the situation there. There is the labour and... Sorry, there's the material and there's the labour. Invariably, it's the labour charges are the highest. There is always the possibility that the, um, the, the tradesman has the material already or there is the possibility that the person that wants the work doing, the lady can get the material from someone. But that is always going to be a rub in the system. The, 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 the differential, therefore, is always the fact that you have to have a little bit of um, flexibility. The system doesn't have to stand on its own. People can come into the system because it's VAT-free, it's income tax-free, it's not subject to any government regulation or scrutiny whatsoever. And so they can use not only sterling, but our units to facilitate a higher and better wealth system uh, or generation of wealth and therefore live, we would think, more profitably. Gary and Will Stanton says, isn't this just another let scheme? They've been around for years, there have been a number tried locally over the last, say, three decades, and they've failed. Yeah, the main problem with lets, and it's very, very commonplace in France, and if anyone wants to try and look at any research ongoing in France, there are more what's called complementary currency schemes in France than any other uh, country in Europe. The let scheme is is an exchange more to do with uh, a barter system than an exchange of a unit, where they all have historically failed, and he's correct, is the fact that you have to have a an exchangeable unit of currency. And that's what money is. It facilitates trade. It's nothing more. It costs the Bank of England about one penny to produce a £20 note. And as we all will know, the Bank of England is a private company, contrary to what people think. And one question I might add just to conclude towards the end of this is, why would the government pay a private bank, the Bank of England, to do that which it could easily do itself for uh, much more profitably? And about, I would say, a good percentage of people's tax that they pay goes to pay the borrowing that the government makes. And the government makes the borrowing from the Bank of England via people like uh, George Osborne, who sits on the Court of Directors of the Bank of England, as a courtesy. Peter, thank you for your time this morning. That's Peter Smith from Newcastle who's uh, working on a new community bank system. His thoughts there. It's 27 minutes past 11 and uh, let's hop from banking to...